Hi everyone. My name is Teacher G. Welcome to our science class. Where you can watch and learn science lessons at home or wherever you are. Our topic today is about measuring matter. What is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Again, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. All matter has a mass and volume. In measuring matter, we will know what is the mass and a volume of a certain matter. Remember that all matter has a mass and volume. In measuring matter, we need to have some measuring tools. Measuring tools will help us to measure the mass and the volume. For example, these are some measuring tools we will use in measuring mass and volume. We have graduated cylinder to measure the volume of a certain matter, and we have different balance scale, like electronic scale, balance scale, lever scale, or triple beam balance. These are some examples of measuring tools that is used in measuring mass and volume. First, let's learn measuring mass. What is mass? Mass is a measure of how heavy something is. You will know if the object is heavy or lighter if you get or measure the mass of a certain matter. What is mass? Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Again, mass is the amount of matter in an object. What is mass? Mass is a measure of how heavy something is. For example, we have this lever balance and electronic balance. The mass of an object can be measured using a lever balance and an electronic balance. Again, the mass of an object can be measured using a lever balance and an electronic balance. The lever balance is used to compare the masses of two objects, while an electronic balance is a, is a balance scale that's used to measure accurate or precise amount of a substance or an object. Furthermore, the mass of an object is measured in grams or g or kilograms or kg. Again, the mass of an object is measured in grams, g or kilograms, kg. Remember, the unit used in measuring mass is kilograms. Thus, 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Again, the mass of an object is measured in grams or kilograms. Thus, 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams. We can use a lever balance to compare the mass of two objects. For example, we have an apple and banana. The lever balance does not tell to any side. We can say that the mass of the banana is equal to the mass of the apple. Again, observe the illustration, the mass of an apple and the mass of a banana. The lever balance does not tell to any side. We can say that the mass of the banana is equal to the mass of the apple. Another illustration is the ball and a banana. 
The lover balance tells to the side with the ball. The soccer ball has a greater mass than the banana. In short, the soccer ball is heavier or greater than the banana. How about electronic balance? These are some examples of an electronic balance. This is a very uh, comfortable balance scale that we usually use in laboratories because this is precise and accurate. How to use this? This is an electronic balance. To use an electronic balance, switch it on and make sure the reading is zero. For example, when the apple is placed on the electronic balance, the reading shows 208 grams. The mass of the apple is 208 grams. We can use calibration weights to find out the mass of an object. Again, we can use calibration weight to find out the mass of an object. What is calibration weight? Look at the example. We have soccer ball and 100 kilogram. Calibration weights are weights with known mass. Just for examples, the mass is below. We have 1,000 grams, 500 grams, 200 grams, 100 grams, and 50 grams. Again, we can use calibration weights to find out the mass of an object. Calibration weights are weights with known mass. Mass is different from weight. So how are they different from each other? Weight is the gravitational force that acts on an object. Again, weight is the gravitational force that acts on an object. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. So mass is different from weight because weight is the gravitational force that acts on an object. The gravitational force is the gravity that pulls or the force that pulls everything to the center of the earth. Thus, weight is the gravitational force that acts in an object. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Remember that mass is the amount of matter in an object. How about measuring volume? Again, measuring volume. This is very easy. We need to remember volume. Volume is the amount of space taken up by an object. Volume is the amount of space taken up by an object. For example, we have the volume of the liquid or the volume of these packs. Regular solids. In regular solids, volume is calculated by measuring length and using a formula. Volume equals length times width times height. This is very easy. Again, if you have regular solids, volume is calculated by measuring length and using a formula. Volume equals length times width times height. That is the volume of a regular solids. But how about irregular solids like pebbles, marbles, some stones? Okay. Volume is calculated by water displacement. In measuring volume of irregular solids, we need to use water displacement method, wherein volume of water plus object minus the volume of water is equal to the volume of an object. Remember this. Volume is calculated by water displacement, wherein volume of water plus object minus volume of water is equal the volume of object. For example, this illustration, using graduated cylinder, you can get the volume of the irregular solid. Remember, you need to measure first the water level without the solid 
or the volume of the liquid without the solid inside. After you put the so a regular solid inside, then check the water level with solid. You can observe that there is a rising in, in the level of water. Thus, we can get the volume of a regular solid using the unit of cubic, cubic centimeter. Moreover, how much volume does this object have? If you want to measure the volume of this object, you need to prepare a graduated cylinder with water. Put the object in a graduated cylinder with water to find out. The water rises 2 units, thus the object has a volume of 2. What is water displacement method? What is water displacement method? Displacement is when you measure the volume of a liquid without the object in it and the height with an object in it. The difference is the volume of the object. Again, water displacement method. Displacement is when you measure the volume of a liquid without the object in it and the height with an object in it. The difference is the volume of the object. Now remember to measure the volume of liquid in a graduated cylinder. Again, first, remember to measure the volume of liquid in a graduated cylinder. Make sure you read the measurement at the bottom of the meniscus. Make sure you read the measurement at the bottom of the meniscus. In this graduated cylinder, we have 3 ml or 3 milliliter, the volume of liquid in a graduated cylinder. Put inside the object. Now measure the new volume of liquid it rises up to 6 milliliter or 6 ml. Now subtract the original volume of liquid from the new volume. Subtract the original volume of liquid from the new volume. The volume of water displaced by the solid object is the volume of the object. The 6 milliliter minus 3 milliliter equals 3 milliliter. So the volume of the object is 3 cubic centimeter. How about measuring volume of liquids? To measure the volume of liquid, we use a tool called a graduated cylinder. There are different sizes of graduated cylinder, and in each uh, graduated cylinder, there are certain level. You can see the level. So, to measure the volume of a liquid, we use a tool called graduated cylinder. In measuring liquid volume, what tool is used to measure liquid volume? Graduated cylinder, measuring cups, spoons or beakers. The unit use is liter or milliliter. Meniscus. What is meniscus? Meniscus is the curve at the surface of the liquid. Measure volume at the bottom of the meniscus. Again, meniscus is the curve at the surface of the liquid. You need to measure the volume at the bottom of the meniscus. Now, in measuring volume of a gas, we know that gas does not have a fixed volume. That this is because particles in a gas are able to move freely to fill up the space in a container. That's why a gas has the same volume as the container that it is in. Again, in measuring volume of gas, it's quite different and hard because the gas does not have a fixed volume. This is because particles in a gas are able to move freely to fill up the space in a container. 
a gas has the same volume as the container that it is in. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Keep safe, everyone.